Good morning, Malta and Gozo, and welcome to another episode of Love in Daily. I'm your host, Sam Vasalo, joined by Tim Diakno, and here are today's headlines. So, new recordings allegedly reference Kitsch Gembri's involvement in the Daphne Caruana Galizia assassination. Meanwhile, Bernard Grech has started reshuffling his shadow cabinet. Ira Losko opens up about how she was molested in a lift while on tour. Peppi Azzopardi says gender quota bill is an insult to women. And a Maltese professor is going to put a telescope on the far side of the moon. Let's get started with the first headline, shall we? Yes, so there's a new, a new player in the Daphne Kana Galizia murder saga, and his name is Julian Hofstra. He's a young Dutch national who had come to Malta around 2016 um, after fleeing justice on the Netherlands. Over there, he met up with with Melvin Toma, the, the murder middleman, and, um, and Melvin Toma confided in him. Now, Love and Malta revealed today that Hofstra did actually um, record Melvin Toma, and uh, that these recordings include um, Melvin Toma implicating Kitsch Gembe, the former chief of staff of the prime minister, both in the murder of Daphne Kwane Galizia and the subsequent cover-up, along with Jorgen Fenech, who has been charged with the murder. Now, this is the first um, recording that we know of in, in, involving Melvin Toma, which he didn't record himself. So in court, at the moment, we're, you know, the courts have been hearing a lot of recordings that Melvin Toma took himself um, you know, to, to protect himself in case, in case of further development. Now it seems that someone else he was speaking to was actually recording him. Um, we haven't heard his recordings yet. But um, we do know that both the police and the defence lawyers of Jorgen Fenech have taken an interest in them. Of course. So, um, you know, Melvin Thomas is usually the one we see with the, with the recordings. It seems like it's quite common uh, in the criminal world. But, you know, with Melvin Thoma, it's possible that we have a sort of unreliable narrative because he is in control of, of what is recorded and what is not. Now, you know, there's been a turn of events and we have these, these fresh recordings. Hopefully, um, uh, you know, the justice system can get their hands on it and it will um, reveal some, some telling facts uh, about the Daphne Caruana Galizia murder. On to our next story, um, Bernard Gregg has started reshuffling his shadow cabinet. So we've had more than 100 days of the new opposition leader, Bernard Gregg, and uh, Loving Malta has informed that the opposition leader is meeting MPs, um, uh, you know, preparing his shadow cabinet, and um, it should be announced uh, by the end of the week. Um, uh, just to remind you, Robert Abel, Prime Minister, reshuffled his uh, cabinet on the 21st of November. Um, uh, we all thought that, that you know, this would, this would uh, lead to an imminent uh, shadow cabinet reshuffle, but nothing has come since. And um, uh, allegedly, everyone um, in, in the party is going to, as an MP, is going to um, have a portfolio. But um, it seems that Delia has apparently turned down one. Well, what it also seems to, seems to be the case is that um, Bernard, Bernard Greg hasn't taken his, making, you know, made his mind up decisively. He has you know, offered portfolios to certain individuals and they rejected them or, or saw it as a demotion, got angry at him, and then he actually even backtracked and, uh, and decided to give them stronger portfolios. I think it's, it's, it's bad enough that he waited so long, that Bernard Greg waited so long to, to shuffle, his uh, shadow cabinet, and now he can't even, he doesn't, that months later, he hasn't even made his mind up and can't even be decisive about it. I don't think it looks great on him in terms of his leadership. Moving on, Malta's most famous singer, Ira Losco, has opened up about how she was um, molested 10 years ago while, while on tour in Australia. So she said that she was, she was on tour with the popular band Tribali. She was the only woman um, in the band and so she was given a separate room along with all the band's instruments. The band members used to go in one by one to pick up their instruments and someone on that floor, some stranger, assumed that this meant she was a call girl and um, accosted her and molested her um, in, um, while she was in the lift. Now, even though this was happened 10 years ago, the way she spoke about it on Instagram shows that it's still very much fresh in her mind. She also spoke about another assault incident that happened even further back. Again, it's still very fresh in her mind. Um, and it shows really the lasting damage that these incidents, um, assault, this is instances of sexual assault do leave on the victims. So. Indeed. So um, hopefully this sparks a kind of a Me Too moment in Malta. Um, 
some may say, you know, why did she take so long to, to, to come out um, um, with the story? But I think, you know, a look at any comment section um, will tell you why um, victims don't come forward. Um, solidarity to all victims, you know, who, who come forward or who don't. And hopefully this, this, um, this brings back a, a really important uh, conversation that we have to have in Malta uh, and beyond. Now, speaking of uh, insults to women, um, Pepe Azzopardi is the latest man to come forward with his opinion about the gender quotas bill. So he said that it is an insult to women. He said that um, uh, MEP uh, Metzala and former MEP uh, Miriam Dalli didn't need help to get to um, the highest rankings of their field. And, um, uh, and basically, the, he, he sees it as, as a kind of getting women in through the air vents and not through the door. Um, okay, Pepe, uh, Ms. Atzapardi, I understand, but this gender quota bill is supposed to help those who aren't as privileged, possibly, as um, uh, Miriam Dalli and Roberto Metzola. Just to, to, uh, to remind you what this bill actually entails, um, if uh, parliament is made up of uh, less than 40% women, this mechanism would kick in and add up to 12 seats um, for women who didn't manage to get elected the first time round. Now, after an analysis done by Lavi Malta, uh, personally, I think that it is a necessary evil, although it can't be in isolation. Um, why aren't parties looking into uh, in-state gender quotas on um, themselves, you know, to lure in more candidates. Um, uh, we need to make parliament full-time, we need to raise uh, wages and, you know, th there's the, the burning issue that if we add these 12 more seats to our already inflated parliament, you know, the wage expense is going to get fatter and um, making it full-time might not even be an option. And I mean the issue of the organisation, to be fair, does, does hold water because it's um at the end of the day, it's still good. you're still going to have people who wouldn't have been elected if it wasn't for the quotas, who will be elected otherwise. And the real problem I, that I see is um, more psychological intent that, that they will internalize, or they, there's the chance that they will internalize the fact that they, that they got elected through quota and not through direct representation. This could uh, make them and others feel as though they have some other kind of standard of MPs. That and the bloated parliament as well. So our final story of the day, quite an interesting one. Maltese professor Christian Zarb Azami, um, a, a professor at the University of Malta and a researcher at Oxford uh, University, is in, has, is, has joined a group of international scientists in trying to put telescopes on the far side of the moon. Now the point of this is to, you know, to place telescopes where there is minimal disruption from satellites so they can find out about the cosmic dawn. Cosmic Dawn is the period between the Big Bang and life as we know it today. So quite, so quite an incredible feat. Um, it's expected, this project is expected to keep on going until 2029. And yeah, pretty great, right, to have mm -hmm. a, a multi-scientist involved. I think it's super inspiring for, you know, young scientists looking at w what, uh, what Maltese ones are doing right now. And hopefully we'll give you the update uh, in 2029. So that's all from us from Loving Malta. Be sure to follow us on all socials for the latest news and have a day full of loving.